we can go to that first slide. I'm just going to do whatever we, I'm telling you, we don't have time for the whole thing, but we do have time for the heart of it. And the heart of it is what we've been talking about all along. If you guys could go with me, if you have your Bibles with me, to Psalm 23, that's our core text tonight. And it's really funny how the Spirit orchestrates everything. You guys know we say that every week. But he is truly beautiful and wondrous. And he totally has a plan for each and every one of our lives. This week is week three of Advent. And it's the week that we really focus on joy. If you're following an Advent plan, I want to tell you. So I'm following a plan that Roz uh, suggested to me because there are a ton of advent plans and I just I told her at breakfast on Sunday I said I don't really have a lot of time to pick one out for myself can you help me so I'm on that plan and I've been reading that and so tonight's message is inspired by one of the devotionals on that advent plan that we're on and it really in the middle of the night I listened to stuff over and over and in the middle of the night it went bam in my spirit and I knew that's what was for today Stephen if we can go to that next slide just reminding us uh, here's the scripture for the this is one of the main scriptures used for this week is do not be afraid the angel said to those that the shepherds uh, in the fields I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. And so one of the things that I was really burdened to talk about is for us to just kind of think about, am I a joyful Christian? Because this declaration by the angel is what will happen to the child of God if we receive Jesus, if we receive that good news. And I want to just say this is that I want to remind you that if, if you are at that place where you do not have that level of joy that you once had, or you do not have that level of joy that you know God intends for you ha to have, and you're struggling with that because of life, how many of you know that life can kick it out of you? Let's just put it that way. Is that good, everybody? Life can kick it out of you. Life happens. There are things that leave us, literally leave us on the floor in, in a fetal position. Anybody been there? Like there's stuff that happens. This is all edited, Pastor. Stop laughing. This is all edited. Stuff happens in our lives. And if we're not careful, I'm here to declare to you what the angel did when Jesus came, is that joy is yours. And not just a barely joy, but a great joy. And all people means you. It means whosoever. And it means all of us. And this is really something we need to think about. You know, he's called us forth today to talk to us about being lights already. Like we're the, we are his hands, his feet, his heart extended. As we leave here, people need to see him in us. And I'm going to tell you the biggest turnoff in the world. I would, uh, well, I don't know. One of the biggest turnoffs in the world is a, a Christian who just sucks the life out of a room when they enter it. Uh, anybody know what I'm talking about right now? Nobody? Okay, two people. Like, there's just no joy. I mean, listen, you are a light to your family. You know those people we just prayed for that don't know the Lord? If you meet up with them on the holidays, you're a light to them. Let us not be the joy killers. Let us not be the ones that go in, and the second we come in, everybody's like, <gasps> you know, and there's suddenly joy just went out the door, or wherever it did. It sucked it. We sucked it all in. I don't know. He has called us to a life of great joy. And I just, I want, I want to say that. And I also want to acknowledge what life does sometimes, because that may be you. Maybe you lost your joy 25 years ago. You can get it back. I declare that to you. You can get that joy back. And it's yours. It's yours for the having. Read that verse again. Oh, she's doing that whole uh, inspiration. I'm telling you what the word says. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. And that is as true right now as it ever was. And as we go forward in the next couple of weeks, may we be bearers of the good news. Not the bad news. Not the whatever the social media news is, but let us be bearers of his good news. He is our hope. He is our peace. He is our joy, and he is, our, he is the love. He's the way, reason we can love. I can't wait to get to that. Stephen, if we can go there, I'm going to just hit, guys, what I can hit. Is being joyful logical? Well, Shirley, you just don't understand the life that I live. You don't understand what I go through. I can't have joy in my life, the life that I live. This question was inspired my, by my sister, and it's not, I'll, let me just tell you what happened. So a woman walked up to my sister, not Heather, that we've been praying for recently, who went to work this week. She was unresponsive Saturday, and she, she's at work. She's back at work this week. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. But my other sister, who um, really does her best to embrace the word of God and what it says, and someone told her, she goes, you can't love everyone. Loving everyone is just, it's illogical. And she goes, okay, this is someone, I can't go into detail because I think we're online. But this is someone, it's just not logical to, to be able to love everyone. And she goes, okay, you go with that. And when you get to heaven and tell Jesus that what he told us to do is illogical, that's on you. Said that too. Because if we really get there, we can talk ourselves out of joy. We can talk ourselves out of hope. We can talk, and Travis, I wrote it down in my notes. You said that. You can talk yourself out of what God told you. The promise that he gave you. I wrote that down in my notes. You can talk yourself out and say, that's just not logical. Did he tell you? He told us who we're to be. So it's time for us to break agreements, as Brother Luke taught us to say and pray with anything that we have said that's wrong and ask forgiveness. I'm sorry. I've lied to myself. I'm sorry that I've believed a lie. Yes, I would, I would declare to you that is, joy, is being joyful logical? I did not make a slide for this, Stephen. I'm just going to say it. Nehemiah 8 and 10 says, The joy of the Lord is our strength. So those of you who came up here, especially those of you who came up for strength tonight, the joy of the Lord is your strength when you're not feeling it. If you read Nehemiah, these were people, he, if you read the right in context, it says, do not grieve. He told them to celebrate because after all of these decades apart from the temple and apart from Jerusalem, they were in exile. They were enslaved. They were elsewhere because of the sin of Israel, because of all sorts of stuff. Some people were involved in and some people weren't. Some people, have you ever been pulled into something that wasn't your doing at all? Has anybody been pulled into some mess? It wasn't you, but it was something else and you got caught up in it? In Nehemiah, they're coming back to rebuild. They're coming back to rebuild the city. And in that chapter where he says the joy of your Lord is your strength, when they started reading the Bible and praying together, people were weeping and crying. And as I was studying this week, I want to just say this to someone. I, don't, I took my glasses off on purpose. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But sometimes, see, they were crying and grieving, not because they were crybabies, but probably because they thought of all the things that they could have done, should have done, would have done, if they would have all been right with the Lord in the first place. But see, the problem is, is we can't stay there. We need to acknowledge our sin. We need to acknowledge the regret. We need to say, God, I'm sorry for all the wasted time. I don't know who I'm supposed to say this to, but I'm supposed to say it. I'm sorry for all the wasted time, but I celebrate what you are doing today. I celebrate what you're doing in our lives today. I celebrate the word of God. I celebrate prayer. I, I celebrate the fellowship. I don't, it doesn't matter what happened in the past decades. What matters is what you're doing right now. And that is a word for someone. Is being joyful logical? Yeah, it's, it's pretty logical if you read the word of God and the promises in the word about joy. And I beg you to do that. As if you're not following an Advent plan, then look up in the Bible verses about joy, the joy of the Lord. Look up that. All the promises that are, by the way, they're yours if you belong to him. They're yours. It's really sad. Can you, can I, do, go with me. So those of us that some, I don't go as often uh, as sometimes, but anyway, those of you who go to Western Sizzlin and you pay for the buffet and you go get a little bowl of corn and that's it, what are you doing? Why are, why are you there? Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Why did you go there if that's what you were going to get? Just go get a can from Dollar General and pop it open and put it in the microwave. No, I'm serious. Why did you bother going? See, because spiritually that's what we're doing. Spiritually, he has so many promises for us. And we're like, well, surely he didn't cover that one. He's, it's right here. It's right here. And they're all, they all belong to you. you pay, he paid the price. And you're there at that buffet. How dare we pick up corn and just take it to our seat and be like, that's all I need, a little dabble do. He gave you all of that. What are we doing? He paid a great price for that. Why are we being cheap about it? Well, I don't know. Tana might need those ribs over there. Honey, they'll make more ribs. There are enough ribs for everybody on rib night. Like, why, how are we talking ourselves out of the promises? How are, why are we doing that? But we do that spiritually. That's what we're doing is getting a little cup of corn or whatever it is and just our little, whatever you're doing over there. I don't even know what we're doing. 
God, help us. Yes? If we can go to that next slide, Stephen. I need to get over to Psalm 23. So the title of the devotion that I, it was, this is actually, I think, the title or part of it. And it went, man, it awoke in my spirit. It had nothing to do with Psalm 23. That's just where the Lord took me. But the other side of yes is what the, and I'm going to go as far as I can tonight. I'm not going to make it all the way through, I promise you. But I pray that the Holy Spirit just has you dig deeper. And I pray the Holy Spirit stirs in us what he wants us to hear for the next, you know, as we journey on in this week. The other side of yes. So if you look at that picture, the Lord led me to that. And when we say yes to the Lord, and when we say yes, see, I, Aaron, I'm using you again. I know you, this is probably not what you want, brother. But I'm just going to tell you, when you say yes, I'm going to do a Christmas show. It's not all sunshine and rainbows and everything just happens magically. There's a lot of work that goes in. And there are times after you say yes, that you say, man, what was, what was I really, what was that about? Did I, did I miss you, God? Did I, do you hear me? Travis, what did you say? You said, when the Lord tells you something, how come we can say, God, was that really you? See, on the other side of yes, what they were talking about was Mary saying yes. And then all the things that yes happened after the yes. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's what that devotion was about. It was specifically about her. It could have been about anybody. It could have been about any person in, the, in our um, precious scripture about the nativity. But about Mary saying yes. It wasn't all like, oh yeah, hallelujah, angel choirs. We're going to talk about how it wasn't that at all, as a matter of fact. But she said yes. And we all in here, every person that's accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you've said yes. The other side of yes can be difficult. The other side of yes is getting packed up and we're headed somewhere. It's not an escalator up to the mountaintop. Does anybody hear what I'm talking about right now? It's not a teleportation from the, the hard work is there every step of the way. And those backpacks, I don't care how well they pack them, they get heavy after you walk a while. They get heavy. Your ankles hurt. Those of you who do a lot of walking, a lot of running, doesn't matter how expensive and how great your shoes are, they still hurt you walk long enough. They wear out if you walk long enough. The other side of yes, this is what this is talking about. And uh, if we can go to the next one, Stephen, I'll, I'm going to try to hit the basics of what the Lord put on my heart to say. So this is from it. It's from Advent, the journey to Christmas. Those of you who might be on that one as well. Um, I don't really go in order. I just... I can't stop reading the word when I start, so I'm, I like do like five at a time, six days, so I don't, I don't know if that's the right day or not. But anyway, God frequently asks for our trust through difficult, uncomfortable, and seemingly impossible circumstances. It can be easy to let our questioning of God get in the way of what he desires to do in and through us. Are we willing to walk through the fire? Are we willing to do what's ahead of us? when we say yes. Are we willing to do that? To me, like that's, it can be easy to let our question of, of God get in the way. I don't do a lot of quoting outside sources. It's like quoting the word that, for me. But I think it's interesting, don't you, that the Spirit of God would lead Travis to say that about are you questioning what God told you? And then here we are again. The other side of yes is full of its own, it has its high points, its low points, its struggles. And so that's what we're talking about tonight. So if we can go to the next slide, please. The core verse tonight is not in Psalm 23, although we're going there shortly. It's from Luke 1 and 38. I think this is really interesting. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered after the angel talked to her and told her what was going on. And by the way, she was very afraid. If you read that, she, was, she didn't just go, there you are, praise God, I've been waiting for you. She didn't, she had no idea. She was freaked out. If you read that, that's how that plays out. But after he tells her what God's called her to do, she says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. See, sometimes when we say yes to God, wouldn't it be nice? We've always joked, wouldn't it be great if Aaron or Sister Kathy would just pop up at our darkest moments at, at the house and sing worship? And we're just like, <laughs> wouldn't, it be wouldn't it be nice to have that? Wouldn't it be nice if Mary would have been accompanied by the angel the whole time? Can I say that again? Wouldn't it be nice if the heavenly angel would have just walked with her through every single thing? This verse is important. He came and he told her, hey, this is what God's calling you to do. Are you willing? And she says, I'm the Lord's servant. I'll do it. And then the angel left her. Do you hear that? 
So don't be surprised if you're in a situation where you've said yes, man. You've had a situation where you're like, God, I know you've called me. And then wait, wait, wait. I thought you were going to be right here. I thought I was going to see an angel every day. I thought there was going to be worship music playing in my subconscious at 24-7. We're walking this. Oh, the other side of yes is not, it doesn't look like that. Do you guys know what I mean? The other side of yes, I'll live for you is are we going to walk this out? The next one, Stephen, if we can go there. So the Lord started talking to me about Psalm 23. And you don't want to know how many points I have. I'm not going to tell you. We're just going to go until I run out of time. Is that okay? Because there were too many. There were too many. I have 10 minutes. It's not happening. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. Stephen, get ready to roll with me on, um, because I'm about to only hit the numbers, and I'm going to go through Psalm 23, and that's it, even though I have tons of other scripture. It's not happening. I know that much. Okay. Psalm 23. We can trust him. The kind of shepherd he is and the kind of shepherd he isn't. Take a look at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. What comes after that? I shall not want. If you grew up on KJV, like apparently everybody in here. In the NIV, it says, I lack nothing. See, he's not a shepherd that's going to leave you and starve you to death. He's not the shepherd that only gave you a little cup of corn. I lack for nothing. He's my shepherd. We can trust him. See, that's really hard. If you've been, like, in your life, you've had trouble um, trusting people, it's really hard to trust the Lord. Like, there's some stuff, it, like, spiritually that has to be reprogrammed for us to understand that we can trust him. I'm here to declare to you, you can trust him, but me saying that is not enough. You need to do it. We can trust him. Stephen, can you go jump to two? The Lord had me all over Psalm 23, so that's where I'm going to trust him to go. The second thing is, he restores us. Aaron actually led a song. He had no idea. Do you know when this got done? Chrissy goes, are you okay, Shirley? You have that look in your eye. I'm like, yeah, 617 is when this got finished. Let me say it one more time. 617 is when I finished this and sent it. Nobody saw this but the Lord. He restores us. Aaron led a song where he sang about the restoration of our Lord. He restores us. Where do I need to be healed? Because he is here to restore me. Take a look at this. I lack nothing, it says in the first verse. Second verse is talking about restoration. He makes me lie down in green pastures, whether I'm busy or not, whether I like it or not. Does anybody hear that? Like, he makes me lie down in green pastures because he knows that's what I need to be restored. Some of you are going, I don't have strength. Some of you are saying, I don't have any energy. There's no gas in my tank. Because you keep running on it, you're not stopping for a fill up. You've got to stop and fill the tank. You've got to let him fill the tank. He will make you lie down. But some of us, we're dragging it. We're just, no, I'm going to keep going. No, I'm going to keep going. And you don't, that's why you're having a panic attack. That's why you're freaking out. He's calling us to just let, let him lead you. Let him guide you. That's part of this too. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Look at this next one. He leads me beside quiet waters. Hands up right now. Who's dealing with chaos? Who's dealing with chaos? That is not where our Lord will lead you. Listen to me. There are times in our lives where after we say yes, we go through, we go through it says that, valley of the shadow of death for you may be chaos. But he's calling us, listen to him. He's calling us away from that to quiet places, quiet waters, despite whatever. What I don't care if this whole world, if everybody insanely does crazy stuff all over this planet, if you will stay hand in hand with him, I promise you, Psalm 23, he'll walk it out with you. I don't care what happens. I don't care what buildings fall down. I don't care what people do to this planet. I'm telling you, he's here for you and you can trust him. He's calling us to restoration. He's calling us to that. Look at this part. He refreshes my soul. Who needs that tonight? Who needs, I need a refreshing. I need a refreshing. Well, it's not that bottle. With the pills or the drink or whatever it else stashed away. It's not all that. Just a reminder, it's him. If you'll just stop and you'll just say, God, 
can I just say something to you that I tell young people a lot for at college, because I don't know their background. Could you just give them a chance? Could you just give them a chance to be true to you, to be true to his word? Could you just try him? Why don't you just try him? Because he's that faithful. Stephen, I'm going to go to the three, if we can go there. I'm hurrying, guys. I literally have six minutes. It's doable, totally. He guides us. Those of you who are here tonight and you would say, I don't know where I am and I don't know where I'm going. I feel lost. I feel like I've lost my way. This is for you. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Can I tell you what that means? What happens to you matters to him because you represent him for his name's sake. He will guide you and lead you, not because you're a superstar, super spiritual Christian. He'll lead you and guide you if you'll let him because you're his and he wants you to, uh, to go down that right path. And so those of us who are like kicking, it's like, it's, read that story in Acts 9 about Saul who becomes Paul. He goes, man, why are you fighting against me? I'm going, I'm going to, why can't you just listen to me? Listen to what I'm saying to you. That's a different word. We'll move. How closely am I following him? We said this a few weeks ago, but I can't say this enough. To follow him, you need to be close enough to hear what he's saying to you. And it says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Can we go to the number four? Because these all kind of go in together. He protects us. I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He is not. Let me, let me tell you something. Pastor has said this before. He is not jovial, fat, drunk on eggnog, Santa Claus. I don't know what to say to you. That rod and staff represents armies of angels. That, his word alone could do whatever he wanted to do. Let me just tell you that. Everything. He spoke this into existence. He could go and everything be gone. He's that powerful. Somebody hear me. Because we don't treat him like that. We don't treat him like that. It says, your rod and staff comfort me. Listen to this. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Woo, y'all, there's somewhere you could go with that, but I'm not. He's a God that wants to show you off. And bless you and bless you. Number five, Stephen, and bless you and bless you. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is barely, I barely have anything in my cup. Is that what it says? Absolutely not. That's not what it says. Do you know what I told Psalm? Somebody said, Psalm, somebody told Psalm, you're spoiled. She goes, no, I'm blessed. Some of us, I'm telling you, I don't, I'm telling you, the world has this all wrong. We need to get our kids to say, no, I'm blessed. Not spoiled rotten. She's a grateful kid. She's blessed. She goes, Mama, I'm blessed. I'm not spoiled. And in this world, they'll make you apologize for being blessed if you're not careful. Mm -mm. There's a word on that too. I don't, I can't even, I don't have time. He blesses his people. He blesses it and he's faithful to his word. And he says, my cup, not my head will be anointed with oil. My cup will overflow. Surely your goodness and love will follow me today when I do everything right, when I memorize 500 scriptures. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And not only then, can anybody see that tagline up there? In the here and the hereafter. In the here and the hereafter. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? For absolutely ever forever. He blesses us. And it's not, I'm telling you, he's faithful to his word. This is good news. This is the good news. And I'm telling you, I don't know what you came in with. I don't know what you're struggling with. And I don't know if any of those things that we've talked about, I'm sure they are because the Holy Spirit led us there. But you don't have to leave this place bogged down in that place you were when you got here. 
and in the last 30 seconds or whatever we have, I'm telling you, he can free some people if you haven't already been freed. He can heal people if you haven't already been healed. And the lights are up. I don't know how many minutes we have, but there's, if there's any person in this room that needs to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior once and for all, you want to make him your shepherd, that's what you're saying, then let it be. And maybe you've been derailed for so many years, you don't even remember what it's like to hear his voice. Now's the time to get back on track.